Hi, this is David from the Solid Rock Church in Drogheda, Ireland. Thanks for tuning in. We really hope this conversation inspires you. Let's get stuck in and as always, get in touch with any comments or questions via our socials or our website, solidrock.ie. Well, I'm here today with uh, Janice and Janice is going to be sharing with us about running and resting, God's rhythm for our lives. Janice, welcome and uh, great to have you. Thank you. Tell us more about running and resting. The two obviously are a part of a healthy balance in the athletic sense. And yes, you're, you're, yes. you're bringing it to, to a spiritual reality as well. Yeah. Um, just when I was looking at rhythm, I was thinking, you know, God has created, his design really is very much rhythm. Um, you just look at the human body. I think the human body is amazing. Like even when you take a breath in and out, you know, you breathe in, your air goes into the lungs, it goes down into the bloodstream. Um, it, it's oxygen, it, it goes to the cells and brings oxygen there and along with food and metabolism and everything else. Um, it brings our energy and keeps us alive. So breathing keeps us alive, the heart keeps us alive. And I just realized how much the body itself works in such it's synced together so well, all the different organs, you know, so a healthy body is is synced together. And, and I think it's the same spiritually, you know, for us, we need to have a healthy body, mind and spirit that we're, everything is working together, this kind of sense of balance, you know, you see, even God's creation, you know, you see the balance of day and night and activity and rest. And I think sometimes I've seen Christians who feel that our spiritual lives or our spiritual disciplines are more important than, let's say, keeping a healthy body or, uh, you know, keeping a healthy mind and stuff. And actually, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that God ever wanted to separate any of that out. If He didn't consider our physical lives important, He wouldn't have made us physical beings. So we're physical beings, and there's spiritual elements, but it doesn't make one more important than the other. They're, they, they, as you said, they're they're kind of coexisting. They're 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 inseparable. Or if you try and prioritize one over the other, it leads to unbalance or lack of health in something. Yeah, I think uh, I think when we get off balance in any area of our lives, it affects others. You know, um, physically, if we're worn out, if we're worn down, we can't be what we what we need to be spiritually. Really, you know, so everything is interconnected. What we do physically, what we do with taking rest, taking adequate rest, and all of these things are all linked with each other. So your first your first point that you want to focus on is about rising up um tell us tell us more about that yeah well again the idea of um rhythm you know god's rhythm of resting and and then getting up you know every every day we we rise up you know and i believe that we rise for action you know we've rested and we rise for action and i believe that as a church the body of christ god wants us to be an action church you know i i i see us as an army that we're soldiers in that army and God's purpose for us is to, he has a mission for us as a church and he wants us to, to take action and to do something and, you know, to get our running shoes on, to prepare like an army prepares for, for going to war. You know, an army has to train, an army has to be ready, ready to run. Um, it's the same, you know, we, we, if we have an army mentality, um, we have the mentality that, you know, I'm fighting for a cause. I have a fight, I have a mission, I have something to fight for, something to do. Um, so we very much are soldiers. Um, the Bible tells us about um, going into all the world and preaching the gospel. And in Ma Matthew nine thirty-seven and 38, um, Jesus said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Um, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers, or we could say soldiers, Mm. into the harvest field. So there's this call to action, to be ready to run, be ready for battle, ready for action. I think that's such a good message for the church as a whole because mm. the, the danger is that sometimes the, the church functions as a little bit of a, a kind of bless me club and we, yes, we fail yes. to see this mission. Yes. And so we're not activated or majority of people in the church don't feel activated into this. Yes. And and what what you're really saying here is this is a call for the church, not just for a minority within the church who are t 
taking this super seriously. Yes. It's for everybody. Most definitely. I think some of us need to find a little activate button in our head that says activate, activate. <laughs> we need to get that message in, you know, that this is for everyone. Yes. You know, we a few the minority on the alone can't do it. You know, it's a call for for everyone. Here's the question I have. If 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 you're somebody who's listening to this podcast and you kind of feel like you you lack that motivation. You mm. you can't find that button or you're not you're not you you recognize that you want to be more driven for the purposes of what God has called you to, mm. but you just feel like you're lacking that initiative or you're lacking that drive. What's a mm. practical way to let that build and grow in your life? I think um practically look around and see, you know, th- there are needs all around us, you know. So part of our mission is to help people that are broken, that are hurting, you know, um, to look beyond just our own needs and to, to look outwards and see, you know, there's there's so much injustice in the world, there's so much hurting and pain. Is there something that I can do? You know, I, I think that the motivation comes from, well, what can I do? You know, it might be a drop in the ocean, but I can add to this. And I think that's very much what an army is. You know, one one soldier in an army doesn't seem much, but when they're all joined together, they make an impact. I think that's so important. And it, it what, what it touches on is that you have to look beyond yourself and your own needs. So if, yes. if, if, if the enemy has you trapped enough that you are too busy looking after your own problems, mm. you're never going to be able to effectively do anything for others. And what yes. you're talking about there mm. is, 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 is it's so vital that we, that we look beyond ourselves to see the needs of others and to move into a space where we're helping yes. someone other than just yes. our own self. I think so. And I think sometimes we can get stuck within ourselves. You know, I, I think, of, um, think of the eagle. The eagle just rises above circumstances and up in those heights the eagle has a different perspective on everything so this call to rise it's nearly rise out of your own stuff Mm. you know sometimes we can be stuck in the mud of our own lives that we can't see beyond our own needs so there's this this call to rise up you know the eagle doesn't have to strive to be to the heights the eagle just goes with the flow kind of i think i'm not sure on this um but i think the eagle uses winds and stuff so the the winds he just glides on the winds the winds are there and the eagle just very effortlessly positions his wings and 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 that causes him to rise and so that's a lovely illustration in terms of the fact that it's it's done by the strength of the holy spirit I think so. And I, I like that word position as well. You know, we're, we're not having to do anything except position ourselves for God to do something through us. Mm. So it's, it's really saying, okay, I may not know how to do this, but I'm ready. I'm ready, God. If you want to use me, I'm ready to be used by you. I want to be a soldier. And again, a soldier is, you know, they have directions from from higher up in the army, so you don't need to worry about what to be doing. The directions will come from from above. Mm-hmm. They come from God. So just position yourself and say, "Here I am, God. What what do you want me to do?" Yeah, and and the second part that you that you want to touch on, Janice, is about running. Yes. So I I think that's a it's a lovely follow on from what we just spoke about uh, to activate us and to position us mm. that we that we recognize and the bible has many scriptures mm. that liken our lives to a race yes yes and i think you know i i picture an army you know an army isn't called just to be uh, trained and ready they're called to you know when you see an army going into battle they're they're very often running they're running forward they're advancing and so this idea of being in the race and running it's it's god really calling us to rise and to run and and we need we when i think the likening of the the running to a race is because in a race is a goal Mm. there's a goal to win the prize you know if you've ever gone out to try to run you have to set goals otherwise you just give up you lose motivation now i know why (laughs) now i know i stopped running because no one ever gave me 50 quid when i got back home (laughs) If, if somebody would give me 50 quid every time i get back i would be out there every day exactly exactly you know, I have a an app on my phone, you know, and it, it guides me and helps me. And and it's it's for watching what I eat. 
but it rewards me when I do exercise and gives <laughs> me extra points. So I have more, I can eat more. So that to me is a great motivation, you know, to, to do any kind of exercise. Um, so running, but I think we definitely need that motivation and God gives us the motivation, you know, to, to run, to run, to receive the prize yeah, and to run with purpose as well. And I think that's actually really insightful to, 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 to also help people that might be struggling with, with, with their Christian walk and they kind of feel like, well, I'm not really, I'm not really living the life. I, people are listening and they, they just feel like they're not living the be their best life in Christ. And it's like, well, maybe mm. maybe you've been running without a goal and that's why you've been faltering. Yeah. Maybe that's why you've yeah. let the, the let the intensity mm. off because you've just, you just been kind of wandering. And, yeah. and I think this goal piece is really important in kind of giving us um, a direction. Without it, it really becomes much harder. Yeah. Like there's a scripture that, that tells us, you know, don't get weary and well-doing for in due season you will reap. Well, that's kind of giving you a goal as well, saying, you know, don't give up here. There, there, is, there is a reward. You will reap. And it, like every farmer knows that, you know, sowing is hard work, but they know that there's going to be something good at the end of it. And so I think motivation is a key thing in running for God. And it, and it requires also, I believe, a, a spiritual perspective because we don't always see the fruits in the natural mm. but so our, we have to have our spiritual eyes open to be able to see things according to the spirit of god mm. Mm. so those mot those motivators are not human markers they're not like if we sow x amount of time we will mm. see five people come to christ you know it might not yes. present itself in those in that form yeah. in, a, in, a, in a physical form or a, a quantifiable form mm. through human perspective so mm. sowing in the spiritual we we got to see in the spiritual to see the fruit in the spiritual as well yeah i think i think going back to the army mentality you know we have to see that there is a spiritual realm we have to see that when we're running a spiritual race we have a spiritual enemy that will try to trip us up you know and when our eyes are open to the spiritual side of things it 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 makes us, I guess, more on guard as well, you know, that yes, God wants us to run, but yes, we can disqualify ourselves out of a race by not realizing that we are, you know, if you're a, if you're a, an active Christian or if you just, you know, you call yourself a Christian, you maybe attend church now and again, wh whatever you are, you still have an enemy mm. who, who doesn't want you to take the next step. And that's what running is about really, isn't it? It's about taking the next step you know it's one step at a time running forward advancing and um the enemy doesn't he wants us to give up and to disqualify we we very often disqualify ourselves out of god's race because we don't realize we we don't realize that there is an enemy who's trying to to trip us up and to hinder us and put obstacles in our path and so we allow ourselves to be offended to be hurt to be disappointed and we allow all these things to come in and we disqualify ourselves you know we we take ourselves out of the race and i think the perspective that we have when we recognize we're in an army like if you're a civilian you don't have the equipment you don't have the weapons yes so yes. you're you're powerless if you're in an army you're given weapons and so we have that as christians we've been given the equipment we need we've been given access to the weapons yeah we we have weapons and it, and it's great um 2 2 corinthians 10 4 tells us that the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world it says on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds and and really you know we have weapons that we can that's our that they are our weapons of war there are weapons that we can as it says de demolish strongholds that means that we're we're advancing we're going against this enemy i, I think we need to have a little understanding of what spiritual warfare is you know this idea of good and evil you know i think sometimes children get this idea better than we do because they're you know the tv programs are all about the monster and the hero and all this kind of thing and sometimes we can lose sight of that so i think i think it's really important that that we understand that we have an enemy we understand that we have weapons to go against an enemy and so it's having this understanding of, for me as an individual, 
and for me to help others because it's it's not just running with the purpose of of getting the prize it's running to to release and set free others you know and bring victory for the lives of others so for us to do that we need to really have an understanding of what it is to unlock and release victory in our lives and in others and uh, you know we've been given keys to do that um, Matthew sixteen nineteen says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, you know, we, we do need to understand that we have keys and we need to understand the authority that we have over this enemy that tries to trip us up and tries to pull us down. I, I, as, you, as you've been speaking on that, Janice, just now, mm. I feel like there's a fresh revelation for me in that, mm. in that sometimes as Christians, we focus on the victory and we're like, we have the victory. We talk about that all the time. Mm. But what you're talking about is actually being aware of the of of what we're fighting against. Yes. It, so it's not only yes. about this vague victory, victory over what? It's actually yeah. a specific enemy who's out to destroy us and we're victorious or we're in the battle and we're mm. going to get victory over our enemy, and it's important to know who that enemy is, what his plans are for your life, so that we have yes. strategy and we're focused on how we are to overcome that enemy. If we don't know our enemy, we don't know what we're shooting at, essentially. That is exactly it, yes. Yeah. So, like, if you go to war, you need to know who your enemy is, where they are, what they're up to. And, um, you know, I think, I think knowing our authority is recognizing that the enemy only has limited access into our lives you know he can only enter where he's given access an example of this was one we 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 had a prayer room in the church facilities uh, with a key code access and one day i went to go to the prayer room and i couldn't get in i was pressing away at the keys and i realized that the key the code had actually been changed you know how dare they without letting you know (laughs) yes Yeah, I can't even remember the details of it, but uh, the code was changed and I couldn't get in. I was being denied access because that that code had changed. And, you know, the enemy can only really get into our lives if we give him access. He, we, we can give him a legal right into our lives by opening doors and, and allowing stuff into our lives. And so I think it's very important. There's a scripture, Proverbs 4, 23 says guard your hearts and it actually Mm. says above all else if i hear above all else i think it's pretty important we need to guard our hearts so it's not just about advancing it's about having those weapons you know ephesians 6 talks about weapons having the the belt of truth around our waist and the breastplate of righteousness the lifting up the shield of faith you know when the darts of the enemy come we've got a, a shield of faith um shoes of readiness to run for God and having the helmet of salvation where the thoughts come in that it's there for for our protection and the sword of the spirit as well for for moving forward but these defense um armor is is very important um to be aware you know what the enemy is doing so we need to guard our hearts we need to root out what's got in and I think when we do that and when we when we close the enemy out He's left on the outside, but you know he's not a silent enemy. He will try, I, I, he'll try to harass us and intimidate us. And I just get a picture of, imagine you're sitting in in your house, you know, and somebody saying, banging on the door, let me come in, let me come in, shouting through the letterbox, I know you're in there, and we would feel intimidated. But if if all the doors and windows are locked, we we would feel safe. And I think that's what the enemy is like. The enemy will try to. He, if he's locked on the outside, he's not going to sit silently there. He's going to still try and harass us and intimidate us. And so that's why it's vitally important that we we know how to keep the enemy out. Um, there's some scriptures that can help us. Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Um, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And James 4, 7, I love this one. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He won't keep waiting at that door. He'll get fed up of trying. You know, what's the purpose of a passcode? It's it's to allow access to those who have the legal right to be there 
or to deny access to those that don't. Mm. And so if we deny the enemy the legal right into our lives and we keep the door closed, he will eventually give up. He, he might try the old familiar way, the familiar passcode, you know, well, I know I can trip them up with this. I always get them every time. But if we keep our hearts guarded and we say, no, no more, he's not going to get me with this, then he will flee. And I think knowing how to keep the enemy out gives us a faith and a boldness and authority, which will enable us to unlock closed doors in the spiritual realm. So we're not just defending ourselves, we're moving forward. We're going into the enemy's territory and bring him release. And, and really, I, I believe that that is our mission. It's to declare declaration and release. Mm. You know, I, I think Luke 4.18 sums it up. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the, the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And mm. I think that really is our mission, you know, to we're running, we're releasing and we're unlocking doors, bringing victory and freedom for people. I love that. And, and so, and so we, we've, been, we've been fighting, uh, we've been moving forward, we've been taking ground. But coming back to your title, yes. <laughs> running and resting. Yes. So there's obviously a counterbalance here. Uh, there's something that's the polar opposite of all of this that's also, that you, that you feel is also super important when we evaluate how we live our lives. So assuming that we've been, we've been running and battling and, and, and taking ground and not giving the enemy any access and doing all those right mm. things, I'm now, it's like 7 p.m., 8 p.m., I'm starting to feel hungry and tired. <laughs> Um, do, do I need to keep fighting through the night or is there, is there some way that I can replenish and rebuild my strength? Yeah, well, I think, I think <clears throat> it's clear for everyone that you cannot keep running. You know, maybe it's not clear for everyone. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe some people do try to keep running, you know. <laughs> I think there's more people out there than you think who, who just are on go all the time, who, yeah. who actually don't know what it is to rest. I think this is an important piece. Yeah, I do too. You know, I think, it, I, well, let's, let's look at scripture for a start. As Genesis 2 verse 2 and 3 says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. So you see God here, he created, he worked, and then he rested. Why did God need to rest? Mm. You see, God, God put the rhythm of rest, it's built into us. God set the pattern of rest. And, you know, sleep is a, is a great example of our need for rest. It's been scientifically proven that we cannot survive without sleep. You know, it, it, experiments of people going without sleep, you find that they have all kinds of um, psychological problems because we need sleep. Sleep is a necessary part of a rhythm. We can't survive without it. And like you say, you know, it doesn't often come, it's, it's, no. Like you say, rest doesn't come naturally to some of us. We've got this inbuilt desire to achieve and accomplish. And I think it comes sometimes as well because we place our value and our worth in what we do mm. rather than who we are. So we, it's like we don't give ourselves permission to rest because there's this striving I've got to accomplish I've got to make something of my life I've got to do this I've got to do that and rest the word rest itself can seem like this inactive lazy word you know so so I think we need to we need to find our identity and who we are we need to bring that balance in you know it's not just about what I do mm. but it's about who I am and if we lose sight of who we are, then we're not going to put value in ourselves. So we're just going to keep on running ourselves into the ground. So to me, rest is, it's a self-care, really. It's, it's, it's looking after me. And I, I think the harder we run, the more rest we need to take. Right. For me, I know that when I feel emotionally and spiritually rested, that's when I'm my most inspired as well. So in anything that requires creativity, anything that and problem solving requires creativity. Yes. Like I, I, I do that best when I'm rested. Um, when I'm not, I'm I feel like I'm chasing my tail. 
And so I think it's so important to uh, to recognize that true resting is where you get your strength, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, in terms of mind and the way you think and stuff. Uh, when we're when we're when we have that balance, when we have that rest, I think that lends itself very well to us living the best versions of our lives. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that you make there because you know we think that we're being creative. We think that we're doing great, but, you know, we need a little gauge in our lives sometimes and we need to look at that. It's like, you know, we have a gauge to see if our room in the house is too warm or cold. So we need to check in on that gauge and see, actually, you know, am I, am I being creative? Because if we haven't taken sufficient rest, and I'll get to that in a moment about the importance of replenishing. Mm. We can be running on empty and not have anything to give, but not realize. So we have to be tuned in to ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I I like um, the scripture, Psalm 23, because it it tells us that the Lord is our shepherd and he, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He doesn't advise me. He actually makes me, he causes me to lie down and he leads me beside still waters where he restores my soul. And I think, I think this word restore is a key to what resting is because resting is restoration. Now, if we look at resting as restoration, we're going to see it in a different light uh, than just this lazy, inactive word. It's something is happening when we are being in restoration we're being restored we're being replenished i'm of the age now janice that if i do physical work if i'm if i do gardening for a couple hours my body's aching yes and and i know that what i need is to have a shower go to bed and i'll wake up with my body to some degree being restored and i think that's what you're talking about in the spiritual it is it is it 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 really is that we have to give space in our lives to replenish um, I, I just think, I think the body, like like talked before, it's an amazing thing because even when we're sleeping, um, when we're sleeping, our bodies are, we're still burning calories. There's a, there's a, a big process taking place there. You know, our bodies are restoring. Everything in the body is flowing together to replenish and repair. And, and so, you know, we're alive and breathing now because our cells are continually renewing and replenishing if that's happening in our bodies then it has to happen in our minds and it has to happen spiritually and so we do need to take space let me give you an example of even how Jesus himself um, recognized the need for rest in in Mark 6 30 and 31 um, the, the apostles were surrounded by lots of people and and loads of needs and there were so many people coming to them that they were overwhelmed and Jesus just said come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest Mm. and I just wonder like you know if we were there at, at that place what would we be thinking? We'd be thinking, I can't believe that they're all just walking away look at all these needy people with their needs and they're just walking away and leaving them all but you see Jesus knew that you can't give from an empty cup. You have to replenish. And, you know, we need wisdom for this because sometimes we really don't realize that. If you don't have the strength to give, you don't have those creative juices flowing. Everything's dulled down. It's like a car that's nearly empty. You know, a car won't keep going continuously. We can push it to its limits. And I'm sure we all have had that moment where we thought we could get away with a little bit more and then suddenly we're stranded somewhere and we've run out of petrol or run out of electric these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the car will run empty. It has to be refueled or recharged. And it's the same with us. And, mm. you know, when a car is being refueled, it can't drive. It has to wait to be filled up. And I think that's key for us as well. You know, the Bible tells us, say that wait on the Lord shall renew. Yeah. They'll renew their strength, you know. And so there's, it's a... There's a, there's a self-care process in all of this as well. We're, we're taking care of us. You know, if you take your car out on the journey, sooner or later you'll have to clean it or you won't see the number plate. It, it has to be washed. It has to be taken care of. You know, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, it, he wasn't just demonstrating servanthood, but demonstrating care. 
He was looking after them. And if we take good care of something, it's going to last longer. You know, so getting refueled, we really, what we're doing is we're putting back in what has been taken out. And if we don't do that, it's detrimental to us, to this healthy balance in our lives, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. I remember as a, as a teenager, I, my room was so messy that I used to break <laughs> things by standing on them. <laughs> and it made me realize there's consequences to not looking after yeah. something. And I think the more, it's p- particularly, you know, we, when we're running for God and running for the kingdom and we're doing this spiritual warfare and we're being alert and putting on our armor, the more that we're doing kingdom ministry, the more we need to replenish you know, even Jesus, Mark one thirty five says, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. You know, Jesus valued that replenishing, that resting. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I get the sense Jesus was never in a hurry. Mm. And I think, you know, he says, he says um, take, take my, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes our yoke is hard and our burden seems heavy. So there's something off balance there. You know, if if the example we see of Jesus, I just picture Jesus going on his journeys. He wasn't rushing around saying, you know, where's this and where's that? I'm running late. He was just walking along, stopping to pick fruit off the trees, having conversations, laying hands on people. Mm. Um, and, you know, even in the storm, he was asleep in the boat. So I think that speaks volumes. And actually, I think when you when you look at it, a lot of his ministry, a lot of times when he did something to really touch the hearts and lives of people, it happened in this in-between space. It happened in this space yes. that was there because yes. he didn't say, hey, listen, I'd love to talk, but I'm actually in a hurry. Yeah. Now, isn't there something in that? Yeah. You know, we're so busy sometimes doing the work of the ministry Yeah. that we're not being the vessel for the ministry. You know, we're so busy running around. Oh, yes, I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry. I can't I can't stop to lay hands on you. Mm. You know, I can't pray with you right now. I've got an appointment. Um, and I think, again, it, it's valuing just being ourselves. I think allowing ourselves to to enjoy, you know, the, the Bible tells us that the, the thief, which is our enemy, um, comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus came to bring life. Jesus came that, you know, what's the point of, Work, 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 if we don't enjoy the fruit of our labor. So, yeah. you know, Jesus came to bring us fun, freedom, happiness, all of these things that we can enjoy. And sometimes we don't allow ourselves these these words into our lives because we're, we're striving so much to accomplish that we don't allow ourselves to have times of refreshing, times of enjoyment, times of fun. And I think, again, it's bringing that balance in to our lives to allow ourselves this balance of everything. We can run and we can rest. We have to replenish. I love I love that because on one hand, what 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 we're talking about, what you're sharing, it's motivating me to run and to recognize purpose and to be motivated and driven and recognize I'm a part of a spiritual army and moving forward and all of that. And then mm. but then you're also bringing in on the second half this incredibly important balance where mm. in order to do that effectively we got to take the other half seriously mm. as well mm. or it's not going to work to just keep going on empty yeah i i love that i love that um the balance as well you know that it's not all about run run running it's great we we have to have that motivation we have to have that sense of purpose we have to respond to the call of god on our lives but god's call equally is to rest you know he tells us come to me you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Because he knows that we've got off balance. Because like like I said before, you know, his yoke is easy and his burden light. So if we're weary and heavy laden, we've got ourselves out of sync. And so there is a, there's a rhythm and a harmony that brings us into that inner peace, really. You know, that comes from having that balance and everything being at sync working in sync with each other, um, not just in our bodies, but in our minds. Uh, I think our minds can be, I, I think, I, I love I love the fact that we have our armor, particularly the helmet of salvation, because that is protection on our minds. And our minds really very much are the battleground very often. 
Mm -hmm. um, as you have been speaking, David, about th words and thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, it's in the thoughts, it's in the minds where the, the battles are taking place. So if we can bring our minds to that place of rest by not allowing those thoughts to take root, then we, we've got that inner harmony physically, mentally, and at peace with God, at peace within. It brings a perfect balance to everything. Hey, I really hope you found this sit down helpful. We pray it has an impact on your future and stirs your faith. If you want to know more about who we are as a church, best place to start is via our website, solidrock.ie. If you feel this podcast has helped you in your journey and you want to sow financially into the life of the church, you can do that by going directly to our giving page, solidrock.ie forward slash giving. And in a few simple taps, you can give directly to the life of the church. Until next time, stay selfless, love God, and serve others. <laughs>